I have been putting this wrap up together for a while. <laughs> so I it really enjoyed my vacation so much so that um, I got right back to work when I got back from my vacation. And I didn't have time to go through my stuff. So this is late, but I did want to share some of my experience from my vacation. It was broken up into two parts, um, the cabin part and the Raven Con part. So this is a wrap up for both of those. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I didn't want to make this too long and involved. So I basically just put everything into like a PowerPoint so I could go through like slides. And that is what we're going to do. So, all right, and here we go. So this is us um, arriving. Normally, when we take our vacations, we go to um, Westmoreland State Park. I love it. Um, they were just all booked this year. So we tried something different. We went to Chipoke State Park, which is actually closer to us. So not a long ride for little girl because she struggles when we're in the um, truck for too long. And so this was just, you know, a new experience for us. Um, Chipoke State Park is a working farm and um, they do have like some museums and things to tour. So you'll see some of that. And so this is just our arrival going down the gravel road that leads to the cabins. And I say cabins because they look like little farmhouses and not actual cabins. But let's just get into it. I do have some video footage to start out. So let me make sure the volume is good. Here we go. That our cabin? Uh, I don't know. Is this the first one? Is this number one? Yep, yep. That's it. That's it. That is interesting. <laughs> it looks like a tiny little farmhouse, not the cabin. Yeah. Please don't let there be granny decor. Oh, there's granny decor. I don't want granny decor. You know, when we stayed at the cabin, I didn't feel creeped out at all. But this might be creepy. And I guess we just park wherever we want. Oh, this one was built in 1947. That's good. I was afraid we were going to get the 1801. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we have arrived to our cabin, which is a little farmhouse. Um, nothing against little farmhouse. I just, because I'm so used to the classic like cabin feel that when I turned down the street and saw that it was a house and not like that classic cabin, I was like, huh, okay. <laughs> so let's see what else we have going on. Do that. Um, so there is a little street light out front that um, is on all the time, which is kind of funny because they have these little stickers on like different like things throughout the little cabins that are like turn off the lights if you don't if you don't need them they're trying to like save the energy so I get it but this little street light is on like all the time so anyway um and so this is the little house that we stayed at it like he said it's 1947 and what's interesting about this house is I mean this is the original house of course they like updated it so that people can like stay in the in the cabins but um there's no plaster no drywall everything is wood planks and so um you can see through the floors they're perfectly sturdy you're not gonna fall or anything like that but like everything is just wood planks anyway so let's get into it some more so this is margie um getting out of the truck and in, going into the cabin for the first time it's a thirsty girl we're getting water all over the floor yes you are <laughs> and so that's just you know her being her and so here um as you can see there is no granny decor I don't know if you heard that in my little video of concern um I have nothing against um what I what I consider to be like granny decor if I'm going to like visit someone's grandmother but I just again have this like preconceived idea from where I've stayed in cabins in the past they're very like minimalist and not a lot of decor it, like in general like you just 
So this place did have some decor, but it wasn't like what I was expecting, which was good because I did want it to be kind of minimalist. But as you can see, there's this nice rug here and I've got some concerns about it. Let's see. Think there are any rules against ruining, ruining a carpet? Oh, you can do it, Margie. There you go. No, 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 no. Uh oh. Don't choke yourself. Got you. There you go. You can do it. Needless to say, uh, Margie did eventually finish her little chew treat. Um, she loved it so much that she pretty much licked the carpet clean. There wasn't a whole lot for us to do, but we did, you know, go after with, with some, you know, soap and water just to make sure. So no major worries there. Oh All right. Uh, here's another little video. Again, this is just us kind of settling into the cabin. And so once we, you know, packed and you started to settle down, we took Margie for her well, I did, took, took her for her first little walk, kind of like around the area. All right, here we go. Margie's taking her first little walk on vacation. Looks like she's already got her leg caught in her leash. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that so she doesn't hurt herself. Oh, she, she did it on her own. Look at that. All right. I think she got excited. Okay, we're going to give her some privacy. There you go, good girl. When you're ready, you're going to go sniffing. Okay, here we go. She is really moving. I may not be wearing the right clothes for this. I could choose in the little house. That's okay. We're doing this. Okay, hold on. We got to be safe, Margie. Oh, crap. <laughs> it's about ridges. She loves walking up on a ridge. I don't know why. I think that's a whale, so we're not going to go over there. Mini babies got falling down levels. I'm not going to be one. All right. Let me just turn this off and then enjoy the fresh air. Here we go. So it's really hard to see in this video, but basically we kind of walked down like this little like divot, which is why I was like, oh, wrap. <laughs> and so she's up on this like little elevated, almost like like little ridge that's going across the line of like the crop fields which she loves to do that. So anyway, I, I did turn off the camera because I'm like, I need to be able to control what's happening here a little bit better. We, we did have a nice little walk. Okay. And so she decided, as you can see, it was time for her to take a nap. She'd had a treat, she'd had a walk, good poop, all that kind of stuff. And so we actually went to tour some of the stuff at the state park. Now, um, the weather was not the greatest. So we were like the only people up and about moving around other than the people who like run the park. So, um, there's lots of different things to tour there. I didn't take pictures of everything. I actually took more pictures than I'm going to show you here, just because a lot of the pictures are just kind of to remind you of the experience. If you see the pictures without having the experience, it doesn't really do it justice. Regardless, I'm just going to share some of the stuff that we toured on the first day. We didn't tour like the big house and mansion and stuff, but we we, we toured some of the other stuff. So anyway, that's what we're going to look at. So this is um the restored vehicle of the family who, you know, bought the home. There's there's all kinds of history that I'm not going to get into right now. Um, but the Stewart family are the ones who basically um, maintained it for the longest time before it became like the state park and everything. And so this was, you know, their car and it's been restored. Um, it does not run because they said that um, it's cheaper to restore a car that doesn't run than to restore one that does. And they don't need it like the family's not using the car. No one's using the car. So it's just there and it looks really good. 
And so it's been completely like reupholstered and everything, but it's just, it was really cool to kind of look at it and see, you know, all of the work and effort that went into it. And this was all done by like, you know, volunteers and stuff. So I think that's um, amazing. You know, everyone was, you know, talking, you gotta, you gotta go see the Packer, gotta see the Packer. And I'm like, okay, I'll go look at it. And so anyway, so this was the restored car that the, the family like actually owned and drove and everything. And so now it's just kind of there on display. And this was just a cool little gas tank. It was not original. It was just something that they added to the display room later on. And then this little door here goes into one of their two kind of like gift shops. One of the gift shops is um, purely just like for the state park, like it's state run. This one is the Friends of Chipokes State Park. So it's got more um, like crafty kind of stuff in it. And um, I did find something for myself while I was there. So but I'll share that later. And then, so we decided again, because it was kind of a gloomy day, we didn't, like I said, tour any like the big stuff. So we did decide to um, tour a little bit of the carriage house. Um, you stand on the outside and kind of look through the glass for this because there wasn't anyone, you know, they didn't open it up. So you could just walk through it. And so that's what we did. And again, not doing a whole bunch of pictures here, just because a lot of it, if you weren't there, it doesn't really do it justice. So this is just kind of showing how we did <laughs> this is us back at the cabin me playing with um, Margie on the couch she's like where'd you guys go and so I was just kind of rubbing her and she was being silly so this is the next day and um, I'm pretty sure we've already like had breakfast we fed her and she's walked and stuff and she's just following Eric around like a little shadow and so I just wanted to kind of show that I thought that was cute and so this is us going down to their fossil beach when we would normally, you know, have our vacations at um, Westmoreland, they have a, a little fossil beach. I think they have like two or three little fossil beaches, but this one was a pretty significant size and Margie loves to walk on a trail. She likes beaches. So this is what we're doing. <laughs> even gonna try to wait for daddy you don't care you're just a dog on a mission how rude margie how rude coming around the bend you do love a beach though i think we should wait for daddy where is he No, we're not going up there. Here he comes. <laughs> She's behind me right now wondering what is going on. Let's keep going. So this is, a, I think I just took a couple of pictures that I just thought were nice kind of, you know, um, serene pictures. Mm, seeing, you know, where the water breaks up against the rocks. And so this is a picture and I, I was so clunky when this happened. I was trying to capture it, totally missed it. So she had literally just jumped up, which is why her, like, she looks like she's kind of squatting because she had just gotten her balance. Now, when Margie was younger, which we do have pictures and footage of, she would love to like climb on these rocks and just have the like wind blowing in her face and the water splashing on her but she's older now and sometimes she forgets that she's not as young as she used to be and I totally missed the moment where like the water splashed her in the face and she like jumps back and so you'll see that my reaction is next but I didn't capture that moment so anyway here it is oh I wish I had caught that <laughs> She thought she was going to climb that rock and she was like, oh no. The water splashed her face. He got in your face, girl. Face. Oh, I'm okay. I wish I had caught. Why does it keep sad? Oh, I wish I. There we go. So <clears throat> they really encourage people not to take the um, rocks and fossils and things like that. And so I took pictures of the things that. Had I been able to take them, I would have. So I just took pictures of them. And again, the pictures don't do them justice, but that's, you know, basically what I was doing there. So she did attempt the rocks again, but she was like, nope, I'm too old for this. And so she didn't go any further with that. Margie has no patience. She can't wait for nobody. Where is she? 
There she is. I know. We're done too. Oh, that's because she keeps finding poop. We're not here to hunt for poop. <laughs> Try to enjoy your vacation, Margie. <laughs> this is the tiniest trail. Are we sure this is a legit trail? <laughs> so we take Margie on trails all the time. It's, it's like her thing. Um, but she she does get very distracted. Like she she's very much a pampered dog. Like she knows that she poops. We pick it up, clean it, you know, whatever. And so if we're walking somewhere and she finds poop, she has to like pee on it because she's like, that poop shouldn't be there. <laughs> like she knows that it should be like picked up. And so she just cannot just go on a walk and enjoy herself if there's poop around. She's like, she just loses it. She's like, no, 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 no. This poop has got to go. But we don't pick up other dogs' poop. And so she just gets very upset that the poop is there. Anyway. So yes, this I I couldn't like make this any like bigger or other otherwise the picture wouldn't make sense. And we were on that teeny tiny little trail. We could actually see the little ferry that was going over Williamsburg. So that's just to give you an, an idea of the vicinity of where we were. And like I said, it is a working farm. And so they had a little donkey there. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I adore donkeys. I don't know why. I just have always thought that they were very cute and majestic. Um, I don't know if it's my, you know, Christian background, if there's anything biblical there, probably not. I think they're just wonderful animals. Um, I love the way they bray or nay or whatever you call it um i love the little markings on them um anyway so they had a little donkey and of course i had to feed the donkey and so this is um i think i'm gonna have some footage of me literally just kind of fawning just kind of like breathing <laughs> as i'm just staring at this donkey um so i think that's next yep here we go he's gonna come this way he's gonna come this is facing me Yeah, <laughs> I know. I have a have a thing about donkeys. Let's see. Oh, I thought he was gonna come this way. Let me watch it again. There we go. Um, and so he, this is Margie meeting the donkey. We were actually surprised at um, like how much. Normally, she doesn't really pay attention, but she was really like paying attention to the animals that were on this farm for some reason. So here we go. She's like, I don't know what kind of doggy that is. I don't understand that. That's doggy. not a doggy, Mar Margie. It's a donkey. Isn't she pretty? She got her little She's got her little She's got her little Jesus stripe. Why, why are you whining? She doesn't. She can't come out and play, honey. She doesn't bark. Look, she actually seems to be interested. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go because you're going to bring her down. Yeah. I know you probably want to play with her, but she can't play with you. Let her enjoy her meal. Right, bye, pretty. We have more interactions with Margie with other animals on the farm in a little bit. So this is us touring some of the, I believe it's the, maybe the Farm and Forestry Museum here. And I think I started to record him and then I cut him off and I didn't mean to, but he never. They're finished. sitting there and what it does is the, the plow splits the earth. Uh -huh. and they're <laughs> That's where I cut him up. I didn't mean to. I seriously thought I recorded him like saying everything that he was saying, but um, we were there, so we know. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, this is this is cool. Oh wow! Got some old. <laughs> wow, that's they got a Maytag in here. No, a washing machine. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, the old Maytag. Wow. Oh my goodness. Here's the old singer with a foot paddle. Oh man, that's cool. 
That is cool. Your own body form. That looks like my nanny's on the table. <laughs> oh man, that would be so cool to have one of those. That old stove. A water pump. Meat grinder. Already cooking over here. Who is this tiny bed for? For people this small? Yes. Good grief. It's probably a child's bed, though. I hope so. That. But remember how low that table was for that lady's grandma? Oh, that's right. That that thing was really low to the ground. All right, let's see. Here's a little placard that you may have seen me kind of span over. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but basically they were just talking about how the history of that area um, near Surrey, there used to be a lot of freed um, slaves um, before the time of the Civil War. Then, of course, after the Civil War, once they were freed, um, a lot of the people in the area freaked out because all of these people were like legit free now. And so some of them were forced to like deport. There was a lot of racial tension at the time. But there is like, you know, a history of there, you know, being um, freed African-Americans at that time in the area before Civil War. But um, a lot of their, you know, legacy is gone now. A lot of that was taken um, um, during the time of like the Jim Crow that was just, you know, all gone. And so this is the little sign out front. So what basically kind of what you just saw us going through was a bunch of different little rooms that were set up. Um, that you can just walk through kind of like your, at your own pace. And there was a lot of it. Like I said, I didn't show you all of it. Um, Cause again, um, unless you're there, you looking at pictures of it doesn't really like do it justice, but we went through so many different little rooms and saw like all this, this really cool stuff. And so that was what we did on the second day. Yeah. So this is the second day. We did actually tour the mansion on the second day, I believe also, or did we do that on the third day? I can't remember, but um, I didn't take any footage of that. They said that you could take pictures as long as it wasn't flashed pictures, but I just decided to enjoy it instead of taking pictures. And here is a field of cows. And so um, this is leading up to the next video where we get to see kind of Margie again, having a reaction to the animals in the area. You can see it, but she is just really like booking it. Like she is, is moving as fast as she can without running. <laughs> I can't hear it that well in the video, but you could just hear the cows moving like so far away. How far you go, Margie? They don't want you getting too close. They got lots of babies. Is Margie, just as far as you can go, honey. She's like, oh, let me go. They're not going to let you get that close to their babies. No. It's okay. All right. We got to take her because she's going to get them riled up. <laughs> and she's sitting over here like, why are you showing footage of me, mama? So this was actually the path walking back from where we just saw the cows and I just thought it was really cool how the little trees form this little arc over the path here. And then 
the the house that was next to it just the way the sun was kind of hitting it it almost made it look like it had like a metal roof but it didn't I just thought this was a really cool picture so I took it um these little benches here um there's like three or four of them on the premises like this one is made of stone there's one made of metal one made out of wood and what's really cool about this is they really do run solely um, almost solely on the efforts of their volunteers I mean obviously the working farm part of it is run by the farmers and their family so they're like actual people who live there like they have residences there and they have like signs out front like this is not a tour home someone lives here but whenever they you know have a volunteer who's done something like 3,000 hours they do dedicate something like this um to them so I thought that was really cool and like I said there was several of them there and so this was us. Um, I think this is either, I think the third day, maybe then we're getting, before we were getting ready to leave and I realized we hadn't taken a picture yet. So this was just taking a picture in front of our little farmhouse that we stayed in um, for a couple of days. And so the last thing that we did before we left, cause we finished up everything, we decided let's just walk one more trail before we get on the road. Since, you know, Marge doesn't do well on the road. We figured we'd give her a nice little walk on the trail. And so this is us doing that. Half a mile. So we don't know what, but let's see. It, yeah, this is definitely a trail through the woods. So again, trail through the woods. We had no idea what we were going to see when we came out at the other end. And so this is us coming out of the woods. And so Eric took a picture of me and Margie kind of coming out of the clearing. Um, this was the little post that was at the end to let you know you had gotten there. And again, because this is a working farm, what you come out to is a crop field. <laughs> so you take a little trek through the woods and you come out at a crop field. So I just thought that was kind of cool and interesting and I believe and so this is a little sticker that I got to put onto my laptop um just kind of to remember our time there and every time we stay at a cabin we always get a magnet for our refrigerator so we have several from Westmoreland and so this is the latest magnet that went on our refrigerator to commemorate our time um on vacation and so that was the first part of my vacation now here comes the second part which was RavenCon 17. So we came home, dropped her off. A friend was sitting with her while we went in, um, did this. Um, I will state that um, usually my husband is on top of things. I love him. He's, he's wonderful. However, he decided not to take any footage of me doing my presentation when I first arrived nor any of the other things that I did later on, which I'll talk about that. So when we first arrived, I did do this presentation. I'm not going to go through it now with you here, but this was just, you know, what I did when I first arrived um, to the event. And then um, we just kind of enjoyed ourselves that first night. The next day we did the um, Wonderland uh, tea party. So as you can see, it's like a Gothic um, Edgar Allan Poe thing. We kind of move that out of the way. So this was the back of the ticket, the front of the ticket. So it's this, this gothic tea party kind of mashup between, um, you know, Alice in Wonderland and um, Edgar Allan Poe. And so um, I, I think that's a really cool kind of souvenir to have. And so here's a bunch of pictures of that. And so I took a lot of these pictures, like when we first arrived, we were not the first people in line, obviously, but we were close, you know, to the front of the line when we got there. So um, there doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people going on. By the end, this place was packed, but I started to enjoy myself. So I stopped taking pictures and just enjoyed myself. So a lot of the pictures are just kind of like the early kind of sit down and see what they have set up kind of thing. <clears throat> a nice little, you know, cutesy table settings. Um, <laughs> Um, I think my husband was making a joke. He's like, uh, I think I want to put some scales in my tea. And I'm like, I don't think you should. <laughs> um, and so again, this was just me kind of taking a picture showing how, you know, different people dressed up, you know, in different things, like either for this event or, you know, for the weekend, I did try to wear like a nice dress for the event. Um, so these, these are our little teacups that we drank out of. 
um I, I took this picture just to give you a reference between like how tiny these utensils were compared to my hand they were so tiny <laughs> um so here I am drinking my tea with my pinky out and um sitting next to this um this is Alex and she's in cosplay um her bird is Matthew because she is actually Oh my goodness. And of course my brain does not tell me what it is right now. It's the story that's written by Neil Gaiman. They turned it into a series on Netflix and she is that character that I cannot seem to think. So it's funny that she says that her bird's name is Matthew because that's the guy's name, but he is actually like, I can't remember if he's like the God of sleep or the God of dreams, the God of dreams. Anyway, so that's what she's dressed up as. And so anyway, I was like, we got to get a picture together. And so I wore my Alice in Wonderland purse just for this event. Um, I, I didn't even really have time to plan for it. I kept asking. It was one of those things where you had to like order your ticket early to get in, but then no one ever would confirm as to whether or not we actually got in. Cause it was the, one of those things where like, if you didn't get in, you got a refund, that kind of thing. And so I, I was like, I really wanted to like, actually like dress up for it, but I didn't want to invest in dressing up for it. If I didn't know I was actually going to attend. So anyway, it is what it is. I still had a wonderful time and yeah. All right. Let's keep going. I posted this picture actually on, I believe, Facebook, on my social media, because um, our anniversary was the day after we left RavenCon. And so we kind of used this vacation trip to kind of celebrate that. And so this was the picture that I posted for that. This was from RavenCon. Um, this was a panel about um, the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And not that I didn't like the other speakers, they just didn't appeal to me the way this guy did. And so I was like, I want to take a picture with this guy and I'm going to make sure that I follow him. So um, he's got like podcasts and stuff. I really love the fact that he runs this program where he encourages kids to read and he specifically encourages them to read comic books because sometimes, you know, reading for kids can be like daunting and it's easier for them to maybe pick up a comic book than something else. And that could be the gateway to them reading more later or they could just become, you know, a lover of comic books. Either way, I think it's fantastic. And so I wanted to take a picture with this guy. All right. And so this was the one event that my husband took lots of pictures of. And I guess this was the one that he enjoyed the most. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. So I got to be a judge at a blanket fort <laughs> building contest. And so this is just um, some footage from that. He, he took lots of footage from that. Um, so this, so these are, this is actually me taking a picture of this. I probably should have turned this sideways. But this was just our little scorecard that we were using. Um, the winners of the contest got a bunch of stuff. I can't remember what it was, but this little trophy was one of the things that they got and it lights up. So it's so cute. All right. And so here we are, the the three judges, me. Um, oh my goodness. Of course, at this moment, I don't remember their names. I'll probably have to like look them up and put them on this in post as I'm, you know, editing it. But um, they're both amazing. I've, I've met her before, set into her readings, um, read some of her stuff. Um, she's, she's a wonderful artist. Um, she does, you know, cosplay and stuff like that. So both of them just are amazing. And so I was really excited to be on this kind of judging panel with them. And so this is pretty early on in the event. We're just kind of looking around at the different people who are, um, you know, going to be participating. It hasn't started yet. But this place was packed to the walls once it really got into like the the gist of it. So again, this is just us kind of talking about, you know, what we're looking for and everything like that and getting into the event. So this is where it actually, as you see, they're, they're starting to like build their blanket forts. Um, it was really a lot of fun. And so, of course, like I said, my husband got lots of pictures of that. And here I am just kind of sitting back and watching and stuff. And um, as you can see, the where the room is starting to get a, a lot, you know, thicker, there's more people there. And so this is where we're actually going through and actually visiting some of the different forts and kind of judging them and testing them and seeing, you know, what they have going on, trying them out and things like that. Um, this one ended up being the winner at the time we didn't know it was going to be the winner but we're you know we're going through and we were just having so much fun and I, I thought that was really cool that um they took our picture like inside the fort that was really cool and so again we're we're coming in and out of them we're testing them out as you can see them walking around looking at stuff and 
<laughs> I'm literally like crawling in and out. I mean, it was a very interactive, hands-on kind of experience. And so this is where we stop to deliberate. And I do want to pinpoint one thing in this um, picture is that we have these little bags here. So one of the things that was really cool about this event is that they had a rule that not only could you um, bribe your judges, you were encouraged <laughs> to bribe your judges. So these little baggies are filled with some of the little things that they bribed us with. And so we've got these little ribbons on them that say reader I am. Um, my little plushie, I love plushies. So I got a little plushie. Um, <laughs> I got a, oh some blow pops are in here there was some chocolate but I can't eat it so I gave it to my other judges um um one of those magic towels of Wonder Woman magic towel I also got a lot of Wonder Woman stickers and of course one of those went on to my um, laptop immediately but here you know some other stickers that were, were there a kazoo um, this amazing dice and so not all of these items were in this bag like we collected items from different people who were bribing us and we put them in this bag um, and so um, this thing lights up this is really cool so it was just a really just kind of like fun thing um, I believe you know I got a bookmark too so there's just a lot of really fun stuff that came out of just doing this event um, another little bribe that we got, I believe is next is a little handwritten note. And so we were like, oh, that's really cute. I don't know if you can see all of it, but it's just a little, you know, handwritten note that again, went into the bag. So, um, just a lot of fun. So this was the winning, um, for, like I said, at the time that we took the picture, I didn't know that. Uh, but we, you know, all agreed that it was the best, the most interactive, the most fun. We could all fit in it comfortably. It had a lot going on for it. It had a, a reader theme, which just kind of was in line with the event itself. And so I wanted to take a picture. There, now, there's nothing special about me being like the judge. Of this. I just was like, hey, if I'm here, I want to take a picture with the winning fort. So that's what I did. I took a picture with the winning fort. And so that was that. All right. So Sunday was the last day. And um, I am wearing a dress that is based on a design that I did of my dog to promote the book that I just um, released for her. So I'm gonna come out here for just a second and show you, I don't know if you can see it, but this is the sticker, of course it's backwards, but this is on stickers, um, water bottles, t-shirts, different things like that. And so anyway, I knew that I was going to be releasing her book, you know, to the public the next day. So I figured why not celebrate that on the last day of RavenCon and everyone seemed to really enjoy the dress. So go back. So again, um, for whatever reason, my husband didn't think it was important to um, take any footage of me actually doing my presentation. So here I am getting ready to set up for the presentation that I'm uh, did, but he didn't get any footage of me actually doing the presentation. So this is the presentation I did. The first presentation that I did on Friday when I was uh, when I arrived, um, I didn't have like a very big turnout for that. But that's pretty common on Friday. You you kind of know that if you are one of like the first people to present at an event like this, you're going to get a small crowd, and that's okay. I pretty much used my first. Um, presentation is like practice for what I wanted to do later but this one was Sunday morning um first presentation of the day on a Sunday so again Sunday morning is another time slot that's not usually ideal at a convention like this because everybody parties hard Saturday night <laughs> and you know you don't usually want to get up you know for the first presentation on Sunday morning however I was so like my heart was warmed by how many people actually like showed up to see this presentation and they were kind of interacting with it. They really enjoyed it. And it was, it was, it was so great, but I have no footage of it to show you that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and so this was us, um, me just taking a picture in the courtyard at Virginia Crossings as we're getting ready to leave Raven Con. And it was just such a good time. And I believe that that was it um let's just cancel that let's see here how do I get back out of this there we go so that was my wrap up of my 
vacation that happened at the end of April and um, my RavenCon experience. Um, oh, I do have, um, there's another, um, I did pick up this book for a con that's happening in November. It's called um, Rick NicoCon. Yeah. <laughs> Let me make sure. Yes. NecoCon. NecoCon. Anyway, so it's it's an anime convention. And, and so it's I think it's actually going to be in Hampton. So I might check that one out. I mean, I'm going to, you know, try to. It sounds really interesting to me. So anyway, um, I have been trying to get this video out for a while and hopefully um uh, i'll be able to finish editing and get it out because yeah so that's all i have for now um what have you guys been doing lately <laughs> have you gone to any cons are you going to be going to any cons um any vacation plans coming up i'd love to hear about it um it was nice to take some time off i really needed it um I don't know if you know, it's like the boxes and stuff that are behind me, but we're still under construction in my office, which I'm okay with that because um, it'll get done eventually and I'm not leaving this house anytime soon. So, all right, I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, guys, I'd love any questions or feedback you have for me. I'm here for it. Um, until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. Hey. Guess what? If you like what you see, you can totally subscribe to this channel. You could also give it a like and leave me a comment. I would totally love that. Okay. Bye-bye.